Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for standing by and we have now reached the start time for the event. I will now be turning it over to Carrie Long, Alaskan Region Regional Administrator, FAA. Carrie, the floor is yours, so please begin when you're ready. Hey, thanks very much. Hey, good morning. Uh, my name is Terry Long. As, as mentioned, I'm the Regional Administrator of the Alaskan Region. I bid a warm welcome both to our current as well as our former FAA colleagues, particularly those who have served in flight service. Uh, as, and we're celebrating a milestone event, the 100th anniversary of flight services. Special thank you to our program participants and the many others who made this Hallmark event possible. It may seem a bit strange, but I see a connection between flight service and Ghostbusters. Maybe I'm dating myself, perhaps. So this, the song is the one I'm talking about, not the movie. Because the answer to who you're going to call for Alaska pilots these past 100 years has been and continues to be the flight service station. Flight service is regularly judged by pilots to be one of the two most popular FAA programs in the Alaskan region, and deservedly so. And I have even heard stories of pilots calling in from the lower 48 just so they could obtain their own local information by talking with our stations up here. Early on, under different names, flight service stations were located in makeshift buildings, including, I understand, a converted chicken coop, except the history doesn't tell us what happened to the chickens. Um, in time, they were provided with watch houses, which were mostly prefabricated wood huts. I know things have changed a bit since then. During the Second World War, the Civil Aeronautics Administration, an FAA predecessor, built a large number of stations in the Alaska Territory. By, 19, by the early 1960s, their numbers grew to 297. By 1995, with the advent of new automation technologies, the FAA consolidated flight service operations nationally into 61 automated flight service stations with 31 auxiliary stations, mostly in Alaska. Today, there are two, auto, two automated flight service stations in the lower 48 and 17 staff flight service stations in the Alaskan region, led by a group office in Anchorage. So far, I have had the pleasure of visiting 14 of those 17 stations up here. Visiting the stations is amazing. The 150 air traffic control specialists who staff them are among the happiest employees in the region. They are hardworking, knowledgeable, and committed to the safety of aviation throughout a state that's more than twice the size of Texas. Many of the flights they support provide critical passenger and cargo services to the 82% of the communities that are not connected to a road system. Flight service folks receive radio calls from pilots relay clearances to the artsy, as well as provide pre and in-flight weather briefings, local airport advisories, and emergency services. They're the ones responsible for initial search and rescue and notifications and communication searches. Their work can make the difference between life and sure death in an unrelentingly adverse environment. There's so, so much more that these specialists do to protect the flying public Last year, they logged an amazing 1,703,224 activities. To borrow another cultural reference, this one from that fictional Army veteran, Jack Reacher, there are four key traits you need to be successful. Smart people, working hard, paying attention, and thinking laterally. I've been there, I've seen it. Our flight service folks demonstrate these traits minute by minute and are simply amazing. You will hear more about these specialists and their flight service stations as the program proceeds. So I offered one last comment. This program in Alaska has constantly reinvented the concept of what services a flight service station should provide based upon regular and extensive interaction with our resident experts. Of course, I mean the users of the airspace. Constantly improving, constantly making flying safer up here the work of the FA flight service stations makes a difference up here daily, daily. Thanks to our flight service station colleagues for all you do to keep aviation safe throughout Alaska, every day of the year in all sorts of weather. Now, I am pleased to introduce Terry Bristol, Chief Operating Officer of the Air Traffic Organization. Terry, over to you. Hi, everyone. 
I had really hoped to be in Alaska today to celebrate the centennial of the flight service program, but I'm glad we're all staying safe in a virtual environment as we recognize the great achievements of the last 100 years. When we look back on the 1920s, it proved to be a great decade for inventions. That's when we first saw the Band-Aid, frozen food, the electric blender, and television. Tried and true, we're still using all of those. That, of course, was also when our predecessors started the flight service program, and that, too, is still very much valued and appreciated. 100 years ago today, on August 20, 1920, flight service began with 17 air mail radio stations that the post office installed at Airfield to provide an early flight following service. The departure time and a coded flight plan were teletyped to all stations along the route. The station stretched from New York to San Francisco, and in the early days, they used Morse code and teletype machines. Pioneer specialists also recorded and relayed pilot weather reports through Morse code, which later evolved into Phillips code to create the terms WILCO for will comply and ETA for estimated time of arrival. There were many changes in management as well as name changes along the way. And in 1960, they became known as flight service stations as they still are today. The number of stations expanded to as many as 300 with 4,000 employees during World War II. And our services expanded too including pilot weather briefings and air-to-ground weather requests. The program adapted with the needs of the time. Today, our stations in Alaska, including Kenai, Fairbanks, Juneau, and 14 others, provide a breadth of information that can be accessed under a single gateway. A new generation of technologies and users continue to drive innovation. However, even though much of the information is digital and pilots can use iPads and the internet where it is available, they still rely on our team to provide key information using voice communication, either by radio in flight or by telephone on the ground. Our team is still highly regarded as a help desk that general aviation pilots can call for assistance to avoid trouble spots or to get out of a jam when necessary. Our specialists are busy providing pre-flight pilot weather briefings, issuing notices to airmen, filing flight plans, relaying pilot reports, and issuing clearances. They're also responding to aircraft emergencies and initiating search and rescue operations for overdue aircraft. From Barrow to Cold Bay, from Nome to Ketchikan, our flight service team is providing such a critical service to pilots in Alaska and elsewhere. When our specialists were asked what they like about their jobs, they said things like this. We feel like an integral part of the community. We get to know the pilots and they rely on us. It's a lot of fun to be involved in the minute to minute happenings around the airport. We provide a service to a lot of small airports around Alaska who don't have a tower and don't have any communications other than us. I want to thank each and every one of you for all that you're doing to make aviation safer and to provide access to regions that can't be reached without your help. I know you must take tremendous pride in being part of such a rich aviation heritage. Of course, flight service will continue to evolve in the decades to come. I'm confident that another 100 years from now, our successors will look back on the work being done today and appreciate all you did to set the stage for an even safer and more efficient and agile national airspace system. So happy anniversary, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the program. Thank you. Terry, thank you very much. much uh, very much appreciated presentation there. And now it's a pleasure to introduce our Vice President of System Operations Services of the Air Traffic Organization, Mike Artist. Over to you, Mike. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Carrie, and thanks for those uh, <clears throat> wonderfully kind comments that you made regarding flight service and the value that our team provides there in the state of Alaska. As I was thinking about 
what I wanted to say today to the, to the group and to the team and celebrating 100 years. It's, I can't even begin to cover 100 years of history, but what I can cover is the last few years and my involvement with the folks up there and the team that they've become and how they've uh, embraced uh, myself and the folks in Washington as well. In the last few years, I've made over 15 trips up to Alaska to speak uh, primarily to our classes as the uh, new entrants came in. And then I've conducted their graduations as well. Uh, I've gotten to know the folks in the Kenai area very well, but I've also visited a lot of the other facilities in that time. I've managed to get to a Palmer and see the sunrise over the mountains there. I've managed to get to Fairbanks when it was 23 degrees below zero because specialists had said nobody ever comes up here in the winter and uh, we doubt you'll, we'll see you either uh, in the winters, but I've made it. And I've been uh, to a number of other places like Juneau, of course. I've been to Nome and seen the gold rush stuff and uh, the, the, uh, the housing that we put our folks in. And I've been in Anchorage many times, way too many times. Here's what I've learned about the entire operation up there. It's about the community and it's about the greater family and the fabric uh, that we play uh, into the entire Alaska area. Today, you're gonna hear from Walter Combs and his passion around the weather camera program and how it's improved safety in Alaska. We have over 260,000 hits on the weather camera program every week. Uh, Walter brings an incredible excitement to that program and an expansion of it to other areas. And you'll hear from Doug Harrelson, who's our lead instructor in the academy in Kenai, and J.R. Miller, who's the manager in Alaska. And you'll see, hear their passion and the leg, around the legacy that is Alaska Flight Service and how they want to embed that into the, the new folks that become part of it. And you'll hear from my partner, uh, Clint Lancaster, who's the NACA RVP today, and his support around a collaborative effort that we've engaged in with our folks and with the, uh, the NACA folks as well up there. The state of Alaska doesn't move without flight service. The connection that is the community to the community is real and it's embraced by the citizens and it's embodied by our employees as well. A couple of years ago, I drove up to uh, Talkeetna on a uh, Saturday, it was October, termination dust, the snow had already fallen, and uh, there was no tourism left. It was a very quiet day up in Talkeetna, and the, special, the specialist that was on duty was one of the folks that I had uh, welcomed and graduated to, uh, to the um, flight service uh, field uh, back in the spring. And he had checked out during the busy summer, and uh, we had time to sit and just talk about what flight service was, his experience, he had come from a center where essentially you are just a number as you go through training and the difference in, in Alaska and how you're part of a team and part of family, that sort of thing. As I was leaving, I thanked him for you know, his dedication and for his willingness to take on a task that we had um, offered to him. And his final comment to me was, uh, I'm where I was meant to be and I love it and I'm never leaving. I thought it was, as I drove back to Anchorage that afternoon, I thought that, that was truly a meaningful moment for me in that someone had actually voiced what they felt about uh, Alaska Flight Service, the value they're providing to the community and the family that we've built up there. Uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Steve Villanueva. Steve is our director for Flight Service and uh, has done a fabulous job up there with me. Steve, over to you. Thank you, Mike. Good afternoon and good morning to my Alaska team. Welcome to this virtual celebration for the Flight Service Centennial. We have looked forward to this event for quite some time. And now we'll continue with our next speaker. I want to introduce Clint Lancaster. Clint is the NACA Alaska Regional VP. Clint. Hi everybody. Uh, thanks uh, Terry, Mike, Steve, uh, for giving me an opportunity to participate in the uh, in the meeting um, in the celebration, the 100 year celebration. Uh, again, my name is Clint Lancaster. I'm the regional vice president for NACA for the Alaska region. Um, I've been fortunate in my career to uh, work with flight service, both as a controller uh, when I started at Anchorage Center uh, in the north area where we rely on flight service quite a bit uh, to help us move traffic. And then also I had the opportunity to represent them in my role with NACA as their regional vice president. Um, the time that I've spent in this role, it's reiterated really what I already knew as a controller. Alaska Flight Service stations 
uh, they're not just an integral part of Alaskan aviation, but they're also an important part of the community where they're located. I think you that seems to be the theme that we keep hearing. Um, I believe that <clears throat> there are a lot of pilots and uh, and people in the industry in those communities that would not be healthy and safe and sound if not for the um, uh, uh, the work done by our flight service folks. Um, as many of you know, especially the folks that live in Alaska, uh, our geography requires that we have a pretty robust and efficient small aircraft system. Uh, these serve our community. They deliver people, freight, uh, everything uh, keep, to keep Alaska moving. Um, I truly believe in what I've seen and what I've worked with that the system wouldn't be as safe or even possible without the work that's uh, being done by our flight service specialists up here in Alaska. Um, Many of you may not know, but NACA actually hasn't always represented the flight service. We actually took over for uh, representing the flight service specialist in Alaska in 2008. Uh, we've had a lot of, we've done a lot of work uh, with the agency and uh, it's been a really, uh, it's been great. It's been a privilege that, that I've had to represent this incredibly diverse workforce, people that uh, come from all parts of the world and work in all parts of Alaska. And uh, it's been great to also be a part of the work being done. Uh, I can't, I have to mention my uh, National Flight Service President, uh, Larry Trattini. Uh, he's done a lot of work with J.R. Miller over the years and myself and, and Mike and Steve uh, to really kind of to make what we currently have in flight service uh, better and more robust. But also uh, there's a lot of things that we're working on to, uh, as Terry said, to, to move flight service and everything that it provides into the future along with the rest of the NAS. Um, I, I really thank everybody for allowing me to participate in this. I think it's a really great uh, thing that you guys are doing. Uh, I wish we were able to do it <laughs> like we were originally planning up here in Alaska and celebrate, but I guess this is the next best thing. So thanks again for the opportunity to participate. I look forward to the future uh, for flight service and my role in helping move it along. And uh, I guess I send it back to Steve now. Thank you. Thank you, Clint. When the first Amarillo radio stations were established, it was realized pilots would need assistance and a service was born that continues today. To be able to communicate with someone who is located where you are heading to or has information about your route can be at least helpful or at the most dramatic times, life-saving. Those original 17 stations along the transcontinental route from New York City to San Francisco would be the first of nearly 650 different locations where services were provided from. The services provided at these locations is similar to the airport advisory we provide at most of our Alaska facilities today, and as recently as five years ago in our contracted facilities in the CONUS. As mentioned, the Flight Service Organization has been as large as several thousand employees, even being one of the original five major service units when the ATO was created. Today, Flight Service is comprised of 192 positions that deliver service in Alaska, provide regional and national support to flight service and weather cameras, and provide oversight to contracted CONUS operations. Originally, our primary methods of delivery occurred in face-to-face -face contact with pilots or over radio communications, both of which continue today. For many years, the telephone was our primary method of delivering service, especially as we began reducing facilities with the creation of automated flight service stations in the 80s. Flight services also used recordings, fax machines, dial-up internet services, all of which were te technological advances in their time, just as the widespread use of smartphones, tablets, and computers are for us today. Over 80% of services we provide nationally are delivered via automation. This allows us to focus more fully on the departure and landing phases of flight and important tasks associated with NOTAMs and search and rescue. Not all the technology gains over the year have been driven by the internet, personal devices, or even the FAA. Improvements made by the National Weather Service to weather radar systems in the 1950s and 80s, improvements to satellite imagery, increased weather reporting locations, put real-time information in flight service hands for sharing with pilots who contacted us. Flight service has used many tools over the 100 years of our existence to view and process weather, file flight plans, handle NOTAMs. We've also used different equipment to measure weather conditions and provide location services to pilots. One such piece of equipment was a direction finder. The DF was expanded for aviation use in the 1930s and 40s, 
It provided a flight service specialist directional information about an aircraft in relation to the station. The information provided by a DF could be used by a specialist to assist a pilot who was lost or help them make a non-precision approach when stuck on top. With the deployment of GPS and associated services, the need for such equipment and services became less with the decommissioning of DFs a decade ago. Flight service has not sat around and watched the technology boom make us obsolete. I'd like to now, now go to a video that was recently released to launch the centennial celebration, which focuses on our people and operations in Alaska. In Alaska, the airplane is basically our pickup truck. It's our family van. We don't have roads that go to most of the communities here. Aircraft are what get the goods around, get the people around. So aviation is a lifeblood, absolute lifeblood. Alaska Flight Service is a, is a great tool for us here as pilots in Alaska, basically being our eyes and ears to tell us what's down the road on our flight plan. Our whole mission is about safety, and it's about getting the correct information to the pilots so that they can make a solid go, no-go -go decision. We know somebody's looking out for us and that if something unfortunate were to happen, uh, they at least have an idea where to start looking for us. Uh, it's a great tool, great resource, uh, a lot of great folks in flight service. We make a difference every day you go out there. Up here in Alaska, the pilots really do appreciate us and we really appreciate them. In the late 80s, Flight Service began providing internet services through the DUOTS program, that was Direct User Access Terminal Systems. Uh, we have much better words today. Uh, today, those services are available online at 1-800-WEATHERBRIEF.COM. When you're a 100-year-old organization, there are bound to be several milestones or major events occur. Among these is when Flight Service employees were the first recognized bargaining unit in the FAA represented by NATS, the National Association of Air Traffic Specialists. Today, our employees are represented by NACA and ASME. In my generation of flight service, the outsourcing of flight service in 2005 was the most significant change to occur. Many in our current FAA flight service organization have work experience with our contract service provider. Just as many have experience as pilots, terminal or en route controllers, we also have many veterans with experience in base operations and meteorological functions. Our diverse experience has always been a strength, as also seen in other parts of the FAA. The camaraderie and teamwork I have observed in flight service is something I have witnessed many times. Whether it be operational events such as lost aircraft or aircraft emergency, or coordination with other air traffic facilities as necessary, communicating with the pilot to ascertain their capabilities, needs, and desires, there has been a tremendous amount of innovation in flight service. Some of the most significant areas I have witnessed are the great tools and processes developed to display weather information, improve note of entry, and display TFRs. We will now hear from flight service managers on current activities. You'll hear from J.R. Miller from the Alaska Flight Service Information Area Group, Doug Harrelson on the Alaska Flight Service Training Academy, Chris Hinning on the Alaska Flight Service Initiative, and Walter Combs on the expansion of the Weather Camera Program. Hi, I'm Jim Miller, and for the past eight years, I've had the privilege of being the manager of Alaska Flight Service. Alaska Flight Service has an amazing history, and I wanna tell you about where we are today, as well as a little about how we got here. Most of the first flight service stations in Alaska were in direct support of World War II, in particular, the Lend-Lease Program. The Lend-Lease program eventually sent over 8,000 American aircraft to Russia. Airfields were built along the route as well as the Alaska Highway in direct support of these flights. The aircraft followed the Alaska Highway to Fairbanks where they were picked up by Russian pilots and flown to the Western Front. The first four flight service stations in Alaska were commissioned on January 1st, 1940. They were located in Anchorage, Fairbanks, Cordova, and Nome. By the end of World War II, there were 45 flight service stations operating in Alaska. In total, there have been 56 locations where flight service stations have operated. Many of these facilities opened in the 40s and operated less than 10 years. Some of them are still operating today. Our newest flight service stations are Ketchikan, opened in March of 1969, and Dead Horse, opened in July of 1970. 
The last flight service decommissioned in Alaska was the Gokana Station, which closed on March 31st, 1995. Today, we have 17 flight service stations in Alaska, three parent facilities that operate 24 seven and 14 satellite part-time facilities, three of which are seasonal. Our customers include air carrier, air taxi, military, and private pilots. Services we provide include pilot weather briefing, flight plan handling, note of filing, airport advisory services, and special VFR clearances. Flight service in Alaska has a rich and varied history. As rich and varied as that history is, the real story is the people. In the early days, many of these locations were very remote. There were no stores and supplies were delivered by FAA aircraft, as well as boats belonging to what was called the FAA Navy. Many of these locations had a community service facility or COMSERFAC, where FAA families gathered with families from the community for potlucks as well as movies which were rotated around by the supply airplanes. Today, we have around 150 employees, including approximately 110 NATCA air traffic control specialists. This dedicated and caring group bring with them a wide range of experience and truly are the heart and soul of Alaska Flight Service. I thank and congratulate everyone who has worked in or supported flight service and look forward to the next century of evolving service to the aviation community. Hi, I'm Doug Harrelson. I'm the manager of the Alaska Flight Service Training Academy, and I'm pleased to be a part of the 100 year anniversary celebration for flight service. From our humble beginnings as Department of Commerce air mail radio stations, we have needed trained personnel to operate and provide services to the pilots and the flying public. Nine years prior to any air traffic control in the United States, these early stations provided the critical personnel, infrastructure, and information necessary to help pilots operate and navigate safely. Service-oriented personnel are the heart of our business. The training of FAA air traffic controllers was conducted at Mike Monroney Aeronautical Center in Oklahoma City for many decades. In 2005, the flight service operations for most of the country, all but Alaska, were transferred to a private contractor. As a result, training for flight service option controllers was terminated in 2005 as well. However, Flight service operations continued to be performed by FAA personnel in Alaska. In order to train the necessary Alaska controllers, a new Alaska Flight Service Training Academy was established in 2011. We are responsible for conducting the initial flight service training for controllers, transferring from FAA towers and en route centers, military controllers, and new hires with no controller background. This training consists of six weeks of air traffic basics, which is taught in Oklahoma City, followed by a four month class at the AFSTA facility in Kenai, Alaska. The AFSTA curriculum consists of in-depth aviation meteorology, satellite and radar imagery interpretation, flight planning, weather briefing, airport advisories, special VFR and IFR clearances, emergencies and lost aircraft orientation, search and rescue functions for overdue aircraft, notice to airmen issuance and dissemination, and FAA specific computer functionality to name just a few of the topics that are taught. One of the important topics that we teach our students here deals with Alaska dependence on aviation. Most Americans don't know much about Alaska. In fact, from elementary school, some may believe that we're just a small island off the southwest coast of Baja, California, or that we live in igloos. But what we teach our students is about Alaska topography and geography. There's a lot of Russian and native place names that they need to learn. 
as well as Alaska's specific weather and how it impacts on aviation and pilot safety throughout the state. I'm proud to serve the United States as a civil servant, particularly as an FAA flight service controller in Alaska, and I'm very proud to be a part of this 100-year anniversary celebration. Hi, I'm Chris Henney, Future Planning Manager for Flight Service, currently leading ASSI, the Alaska Flight Service Initiative. ASSI is working on solutions to improve flight service operations in Alaska, as well as ensuring its viability for the next generation of users. We are in the middle of the exploration and evaluation phase, working with our NATCA partners to analyze data and understand the existing operational environment and validating our stakeholders' current and future needs. As we celebrate 100 years of flight service, I can't help but look back at the changes that have occurred. The internet, cell phones, tablets, all have changed how stakeholders utilize our services. Many of the changes ASSE is evaluating will modernize the aging Alaska infrastructure and equipment still in use today. We are in the final stages of completing a concept of operations that outlines our future vision. This will provide the roadmap for future requirements and changes that are needed for a phased approach to modernization. Currently, we have started the groundwork to replace the flight service voice communication equipment. The current system in Alaska that we use to communicate with aircraft and provide services over the phone is over 30 years old. This is a major project and will take several years to complete and is critical to our modernization efforts. Other activities underway will provide multi-touch electronic flight strips at each facility in Alaska. We are working on console design issues between parent and satellite facilities with a focus on long-term ergonomic solutions and training for our specialist. In addition, development is ongoing for a two-way data communication capability to allow two-way texting of messages between flight service and pilots participating in the enhanced special reporting services. Currently, pilots send one-way search and rescue alert messages to flight service specialists with satellite communication capabilities such as spot, spider tracks, and inReach. The new capability will allow specialists to respond to pilots. Flight Service has a very successful track record for implementing changes. Changes that have created efficiencies and brought new capabilities to users and improved the effectiveness of our specialists. We continue to communicate our goals, strategy, plans, and results to our employees and stakeholders along the way. Happy 100th anniversary to Flight Service. It is an honor to celebrate with you and to see how far we have come over the last century and we are excited about the changes underway in Alaska. Thank you. Hello, I'm Walter Combs. I'm the manager of the FAA's weather camera program. This program seeks to improve aviation safety and efficiency by providing current visual weather information to pilots and other users. This service is widely recognized throughout the industry for providing measurable reductions to weather-related accidents and measurable increases in aviation efficiencies. The images provide pilots, dispatchers, and flight service station specialists with up-to-date weather conditions at airports and mountain passes, and it helps to enhance pilot pre-flight and in-flight decision-making. When combined with textual weather products such as METARs, the camera images become a powerful go or no-go flight decision tool. The program owns and maintains 230 camera sites in Alaska, and it's hosting images from more than 200 camera sites throughout Canada. The images and other aviation data sets are all made available to the public on the program's website, https colon forward slash forward slash weathercams.faa.gov. The program never rests. We recently installed 13 camera sites in the state of Colorado, and we're so we'll soon install 23 camera systems in the Hawaiian Islands to help support needed aviation safety increases in that airspace as well. Finally, in Alaska, we're working to develop new and improved cameras and other weather sensors that will allow us to affordably expand available weather data information throughout the state. So stay tuned. New and improved weather camera services are coming your way soon. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen, for the history and giving us an update on current activities. 
We are excited about the next phase of flight service in Alaska and the efforts underway to enhance services. As part of our celebration, in honor of flight service employees and acknowledging our history, we have coordinated with Senator Lisa Murkowski's office to have flags flown over the U.S. Capitol that will dis be displayed in each flight service station in Alaska and FAA headquarters. Certificates to acknowledge the flight service 100 year anniversary are signed by our Chief Operating Officer, Terry Bristol, and me. In addition, you can see that pins <laughs> purchased by managers for their employees. Posters, banners, and murals will be displayed in our parent facilities and at headquarters, and you should be seeing a sample of those on the screen right now. I hope that when you see these items to commemorate 100 years of flight service, that you are as proud of our heritage as I am. We look forward to continued success and innovation as we start our second century as we modernize the infrastructure in Alaska, expand training capabilities, and enhance the weather camera program. I wanna thank our entire workforce for your commitment to safety and dedication to public service. You are the reason that flight service has enjoyed its long tenure and continues to evolve to meet our stakeholder needs. I would now like to turn the program back over to our Chief Operating Officer, Terry Bristol, for some special acknowledgements. Well, hello. Uh, it's great to be with everyone. Uh, you know, as many have said, we wish we could have done this in person. Uh, that just was not to be, but I'm so excited to see everyone. Great remarks. Uh, so again, uh, congratulations, Flight Service. So thank you, Steve, for the tee up. Um, certainly, I hope everybody's enjoying the program. Uh, before we have closing remarks, I want to recognize a few people who have become synonymous with Flight Service. The leadership of these individuals have really made a difference to this program, uh, to the ATO, and to the entire FAA, and I know to the flying public as well. They're truly the best examples of public servants. So the first person that I'd like to recognize has served as the manager of Alaska Flight Service Information Area Group since 2012. And he leads an organization of 150 professionals. J.R. Miller uh, got his start in the Air Force, and then he began his FAA career in 1983 as a student in the air traffic and route and terminal environment. J.R. later moved to flight service, and he served us from St. Louis to the most remote parts of Alaska. J.R. served in a lot of key positions, including air traffic controller, operations supervisor, operations manager, air traffic manager, and safety and operations manager. His accomplishments include creating and developing the Palmer Centralized Rotation and being a champion for the Flight Service Training Academy and mentoring many other individuals. JR leads by example and he models respect through collaborative engagement with other lines of business and our labor partners. He fosters teamwork and he has a strong sense of business acumen. Jared's ability to advocate for flight service uh, with his unique feature, with its unique features and challenges has benefited the Alaskan aviation community, uh, our stakeholders, employees, and our external organizations. So JR, we appreciate everything that you've done in the course of your more than 38 years. Uh, at the FAA. Thank you for your service. Thanks so much for the kind words. They certainly mean a lot. I've been around flight service close to 50 years, first as a pilot, and the last 35 as an employee of the FAA. I can wow. truly say that I've enjoyed every minute of it. I've had the privilege of working with a wonderful group, highly dedicated professionals, and to be recognized like this is truly an honor. I look forward to the next 100 years. And I also want to give a shout out to my family for following me around to some crazy places in Alaska and always being a support. So thanks yeah. to them. Well, that's thanks wonderful. To, thanks to the team that, that uh, I have the privilege to work with. And again, thanks for the rest. Okay. Thank you again, JR. That's wonderful. 
Uh, the next uh, person that I would like to recognize is our Director of Flight Service, Steve Villanueva. Um, Steve is no stranger to you. He started as an air traffic control specialist and later uh, as a front uh, support specialist and then a, a frontline manager. Uh, Steve became the manager of flight uh, service safety and operations. He spearheaded one of the FAA's strategic initiatives, Flight Service NAS Efficient Streamlined Services. That's a mouthful. Uh, it was a huge undertaking, and Steve stuck with it for seven years and implemented 21 changes that saved the agency millions of dollars without compromising safety or service. In 2016, Steve became the first Hispanic selected as director of flight service, where he and his team managed the FAA's uh, delivery of flight service across the state of Alaska. Steve also oversaw the NOTAM office for a number of years. Steve has decided to retire at the end of this month after 31 years. Congratulations. And he'll be remembered as a fantastic public servant. But most of all, we're going to remember what a great person Steve is. He's a quiet leader who focuses on actions instead of words. He generates excitement and he earns loyalty. We like to say that people should assume positive intent and Steve embodies that principle. He sees the good in everyone and he's never too busy to answer a question or an email. Steve and his wife Yolanda became foster parents and welcomed 37 children into their home over a nine year period, eventually adopting three as their own. I know he's going to enjoy spending more time with all of his family who give him so much joy. So Steve, I'm happy to present you with a certificate recognizing your service. Congratulations. Thank you, Terry. Uh, very, very kind words, bringing up some memories uh, of things I haven't thought for a while. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I have been very lucky to have worked with some wonderful people, uh, people that uh, I include, count as friends, employees, managers, and, and the leadership I've had has been tremendous. It's been very important to have that, and I appreciate that. And like JR, I'd like to appreciate uh, or recognize my wife who I brought here next to me. And, Yay! And <laughs> Let's get her on camera. <laughs> Come here. Oh. <laughs> oh, good to see you, Yolanda. Like you. you too, thank you. <laughs> Awesome. Well, Steve, we're going to miss you. Congratulations and thank you for everything. You made a difference. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, uh, this next person has tried to retire uh, after 36 years of service, but he keeps getting reeled back in. Mike Artist, our Vice President of System Operations Services, has been a tremendous advocate of the Alaska Flight Service Program. Mike was instrumental in ensuring that the Alaska Flight Service Training Academy received the tools, equipment, and the instructors to expand the facility and increase the pipeline of training candidates. Mike brought the weather camera program into flight service and he oversaw the plans to improve that. Mike traveled to Alaska, as he mentioned, many times over the last few years, sometimes for only a day to celebrate with new specialists at their commencement ceremony. He conducted site visits, site visits to Alaska Flight Service Stations to meet our people and better understand the service that they provide and the environment that they work and they live in. Mike's taken the time to understand the unique characteristics of Alaska, and he's improved employee engagement and our relationship with our labor partners. We're having a flight service 100 year anniversary celebration because Mike understood its historical significance and he made sure it was a priority for all of us. Mike, I know you like to recognize, recognize others and not necessarily receive recognition, but we couldn't help ourselves today. So thank you for your contributions in your leadership. We have a poster commemorating uh, today's event for you, Mike. All good. Thank you, Terry. I appreciate the uh, <clears throat> the opportunity that you've given me. Um, you have a great team. 
and I've told you that before. You yeah. have. Uh, and it's it's uh, it's great to move into retirement knowing that you have a great team with Ginny coming in behind me, uh, and the folks that we have in flight service up in Alaska, and the service that they're going to continue to provide. Um, it really has been an honor to work up there. Um, and I just can't thank you enough for everything and the opportunities you've given me. So thanks. Well, again, we're going to miss you and uh, thank you for your leadership. It's just, it's been terrific. So, okay. Um, so, you know, what a great event. Thank you, everyone. Uh, and again, wish we could have been there in person, but I know I look forward to getting back to Alaska when it's safe for all of us to, to start traveling again. I'm gonna turn it over to Ginny Boyle. Ginny is, currently is our Deputy uh, Vice President for System Operations Services, uh, and Ginny will step in uh, behind Mike. So Ginny, over to you. Thank you all for joining us today to celebrate 100 years of flight service. Special thanks to Alaska Regional Administrator, Carrie Long, for taking the time to open our event and for sharing his thoughts on this significant anniversary. Flight service provides an important role in the Alaska community. We're thankful for our team of specialists and support staff that ensure that everyday operations are safe and efficient. We're looking forward to the next 100 years. All right, so as a final note, I want to express my sincere congratulations to all current and past specialists, everyone who has used a microphone using our radio telephony identification, radio. For me, it was here on radio and Lansing Radio. We owe our longevity to our pilots, your hard work, and our communities that have supported us all these years. This concludes our program. Thank you for being here to celebrate Flight Service's 100th anniversary. Have a good day.